Attention again to just begin the circling. One thing about circles I'll always find, I think they're some of the best ways for human beings to meet. One of the things that has happened um, for our, our society and sort of been developing in the way that it did was that we forgot that circles were the original way that we met. And the great thing about circles is you can't hide. You can't hide. <laughs> you can't hide. You can't hide anything. You can't hide and not either if you're good as even, right? And so in order to understand who we are, it's the circles that help to tell us that as we meet people and look at them eye to eye. Really the Writing Relations Initiative is an initiative that is meant to, you know, bring us into a space in Canada to start to, for the healing journey in many ways, across all backgrounds, abilities, experiences, you name it, to create these spaces where we can start to figure out how do we write relations in this country. Um, in terms of looking at economic justice, political justice, what does that look like? What does that mean? What does it mean to like step into maybe the space of being um, a female energy, perhaps? We talk about patriarchy, we talk about all those pieces. So writing relations is really for us to be in a space of, I don't know, for me, it's, it's for us to be in a space of um, healing and trust together, but also challenging each other and learning from each other. All of you I know I respect so greatly and I'm so honored to have all of you here. Even those from you out of town, like Sue, I've heard incredible things about you. And like, it's exciting to put a face to you, Kimberly, and your demos, like, thank you. National facilitator for the Writing Relations Program and support various um, network gatherings like this across the country and have the the pleasure of uh, being part of hosting and facilitating conversations that truly matter at this point in time in history for us to step forward in a heart-centered way, for us to learn how to be together again and to really learn and unlearn what we need in order to strengthen our capacity as adult educators and as humans in the world to move things towards more justice. And I'm um, so grateful to be here. Maybe four years ago, I was a refugee with my kids, and I did, I, now 25 and 23, I'm very young. But <laughs> 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 I was invited by uh, my, my sister because we became, we do the same work, we became very close, and the reason I survived is because I had people, I had women to lean on and and that's how I get into working with um, the community because the community that I'm in is both Aboriginal and newcomers mm -hmm. because now they have children with each other. Mm -hmm. They marry like my nieces and nephews and I bridge. I came here today because uh, a couple of great friends of mine are connected with this project and what happened was uh, I was contacted by these close friends of mine that worked with writing relations. And I responded and I was very honored and lucky to be able to come and join, eh? Oh my gosh, I cannot tell you. It's amazing. I wish we had this all the time. The experience is, uh, makes me feel warm, makes me feel loved and cared for. And I'm very lucky to be able to have this kind of conversation with people that feel the same way about life like me. <laughs> be vulnerable, able to take off a mask and show what's behind that mask. 
this is very courageous, deeply powerful and important work, and it ain't easy. And so, coming from various perspectives, all of us together in this circle, we're going to have moments where it's going to get potentially difficult. And so in preparation for that, you know, I would like each of us to just take a moment and turn to the person next to you and just chat for a couple minutes about what you might need from yourself in this group in order to work in right relation and be able to fully participate with your whole self. There's many people that do face racism and things like that, um, but they're all valid and they should all be equally considered. Yeah, but you see, these were all white women telling us. Yes. That, like when a person of color is talking, there's a, it's okay. It, I don't feel as minimized. It's almost like, yeah, I go through the same thing. Mm -hmm. But when it's white people saying, wow, it's not on the end, I just like, I, I want to scream. I think, yeah. It's having that like open ears and like really paying attention. And we're quite aware that, that mm -hmm. everybody goes through it. But right now we're talking about our truth. Yeah, exactly. You know, and this is where my journey is, you know, it is showing I love the fact that I'm able to share love in my life with my partner and my relatives too. Because you know, we no longer have our mom, we no longer have a grandma to show us all of that, but they left it. You know, they they were there long enough to show me how I could actually demonstrate. Mm -hmm. My name is Sue Derange. Nice to meet you. So, first question is, is how, why did you come here on this trip for John Hunter Center? Oh, well, I came on this trip because Kim put my name forward to Renee and Renee invited me. And it looked kind of interesting, but I wasn't sure what I was getting into. And part of me was scared that it would be on a different track than what I believed. But I came here and it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And how was your experience so far being here? It's been amazing. It's a feeling of sister and brotherhood. It's a feeling of people that really care and people that want to create a better world within Canada and to bring us all together. So it's called right relations so that we can all have unity and justice and caring and become that one human family that we should become. We're divi so divided because of so many things and it's gonna get us on that track to what I call mending the sacred hoop. I'm Louise Pajdi. And what, what, why did you come here today? I was invited by Renee um, to do teaching, to um, assist in grounding, and to um, bring something that um, connected me to Canada. And I brought my drum. She just glowed. She was absolutely glorious. And I said to her, what is that? And she said, heart wide open. <laughs> so that is what I would like each one of you to be here, is heart wide open. The theme that I introduced was Heart Wide Open and I saw that unfold in these, um, well, the last day and a half and to be able to hear the personal stories of other people and the other participants in, in this um, gathering has been so illuminating and so illumination brings understanding and I understand more about <clears throat> other people and can have my heart wide open to receive um, more compassion to give away. Thanks. Thank you for asking me. No problem. No criticism, no condemnation, no judgment, no gossip that tears people apart. From your heart, and I would like each of you to gently close your eyelids Place your hand over your heart and go into that, into your heart. You cry in these spaces and you cry in, in those. That's really, to me, the best way to be an activist is you cry. 
colonialism has taught us not to. Mm-hmm. It has separated us from our own feelings. It has, it has dehumanized us. Okay? Um, the stories that we'll hear will touch us, and they will, they will come deep. I want you to be mindful that it is in the present sense that these can go deep, but sometimes we carry past life stuff, and I believe in that, so I, I know I don't want to go too far into that, but sometimes some of us carry that too, right? So we've got to balance that out and see where it is that this pain is coming from. Um, it is a safe place. The fact that people feel that they can cry is that we're creating that space here, all right? Um, if you want to be a rebel, cry. <laughs>